Okay, welcome to you members of the media. As you may be aware, I'm Cesar Mabizela, the Vice Chancellor of Rhodes University. I thought I should just give you an update on the development on our campus. Uh, the past few days have been quite challenging, uh, but there have been important lesson le lessons learned. Uh, I always view any opportunity of this nature as an opportunity to learn. Rhodes University condemns rape and sexual violence and is committed to upholding the Constitution of South Africa, which is the supreme law of the land. We acknowledge that while we are a microcosm of society in which sexual violence and rape are pervasive, our university does not and cannot tolerate this culture. Rape culture, which refers to cultural practices and norms that uphold patriarchy and tolerate gender-based violence as a norm, is endemic in our society. Every person has a right to their bodily integrity. One rape is one too many. Rose University will never protect a rapist. A rapist belongs in jail and needs to stay there for a very, very long time. We acknowledge that there are flaws within the systems that are meant to ensure justice when one's rights have been violated. And so, our students have a right to be angry. Society fails survivors of rape daily as they are often not believed, and securing a conviction is an excruciatingly difficult, uh, difficult task and presents significant barrier to reporting cases of rape. We need to debunk the stranger danger myth. As more often than not, rape is not reported because these assaults take place within intimate relationships. Rhodes University has committed to address our policies and protocols to ensure that we rid our institution of the pernicious scourge of sexual violence and rape and provide a safe, secure, and supportive space for survivors of rape and sexual violence. The challenge of reading our society of the pernicious scourge of sexual violence and rape calls for a big, bold, and imaginative response, and not just tinkering around the margins. To that end, we have established a task team comprising of staff members and students and chaired by Professor Ketriona McLeod to look into ways that the university can strengthen its responsiveness to cases of sexual harassment and violence. The following mandate of the task team will be finalized this morning. One, to make recommendations concerning the ways in which the experiences of survivors of sexual violence can be heard in a safe, confidential, supportive space, and recommend ways in which current spaces may be enhanced or improved upon. Second, to review all policies and procedures relating to sexual offenses, gathering input from all stakeholders and interested parties through open invitation. Engage in a reflective process in which the inadequacies of the present situation are highlighted and better ways of dealing with issues of sexual violence instituted. Recommend ways in which staff, including those who are in grades one to six, and students, and student knowledge of policies and procedures may be improved in an ongoing and sustained manner. Let me just read that again. This task team is to review all policies and procedures relating to sexual offenses,
gathering input from all stakeholders and interested parties to open invitation and to engage in a reflective process in which the inadequacies of the present situation are highlighted and better ways of dealing with issues of sexual violence instituted. They have to recommend ways in which staff, including those in grades one to six, and student knowledge of policies and procedures may be improved in an ongoing and sustained manner. Third, to recommend ways in which issues related to sexual violence, rape culture, and heteropatriarchal gendered norms can be embedded in the curriculum and other activities of our university, including during the orientation week in our residences and working with the trade unions, that this, that this must be done in a sustained manner and in a way that emphasizes the prevention of sexual violence and making sure that we are aware of its locatedness within the gendered power relations. Fourth, to conduct an audit of systemic issues, e.g. the institutional culture, staff-student relations, relations between different grades of staff, attitudes of management, academics, students, administrative and support staff that promote and undermine rape or sexual violence culture at Rhodes University, and recommend ways in which systemic issues that promote rape and sexual violence may be addressed. Fifth, to investigate ways in which the university does and may further engage locally with our local community and business and more nation nationally on issues of policy law, research and activism regarding sexual violence and rape. And sixth, to develop a system of monitoring and evaluation of the embedding of the recommendations within general policy and procedures of the university and the implementation of accepted recommendations. So that, those are the uh, terms of reference of this task team. In the short term, we have committed to increasing the capacity of our harassment office so that survivors of rape and sexual violence are attended to without any delay. Second, we have decided to strengthen and expand the existing sensitivity training that is provided to staff and students so that they can deal empathetically and in a caring manner towards survivors of sexual violence and rape. Third, we have committed to using external prosecutors to deal with cases of rape. Fourth, we have agreed to set up a task team to review Rhodes University's sexual assault protocol. Now, this task team will feed into the work of the earlier task team that I have mentioned. The point here, we felt that it was important to look at our sexual assault protocol as a matter of urgency, and that the work that this task team will do will then be communicated to the first task team. Any student who is accused of any offense will always be treated in line with Section 35 of our Constitution. And all students who have been found guilty of misconduct, including rape, will have their transcripts endorsed. We have also made a call to all the students who have been sexually assaulted or raped to come forward to report those cases so that we can act and act expeditiously against those who commit those horrific crimes. Rhodes University, University has in place several initiatives to raise awareness of sexual violence and rape and support for its students. During orientation, we have had extensive programs and activities, including shows by the drama department with specific education agendas on sexual violence. Each year, 
the student's program is adapted according to the feedback from the previous year. Rhodes has a committee dedicated to addressing issues of gender-based violence, and this committee is called GENACT. We also have what we call the Silent Protest Committee. With new influxes of students every year, this work needs to be continuously developed. This year, the university celebrates the 11th year of our annual silent protest, the largest national awareness raising campaign against rape and sexual violence. The university will continue these initiatives and re-examine where we might add and or alter our current initiatives. I think it is important to mention that uh, silent protest is located within the office of the vice chancellor just to underline the importance that we attach to raising awareness uh, on issues of sexual violence and rape in our university. The university agrees with students on all the issues that they have raised. The one area where we have not been able to find each other with the students is in respect of the action that has to be taken against individuals whose names appear on the hashtag RU reference list. Just to give you a brief background, last Sunday a list of 11 names was posted on the SRC uh, Facebook. Those are names of our current and former students. And those are the people who are alleged to have committed a crime of sexual assault or rape. So the disagreement here arises from the fact that there is a view that those students whose names are on the list should be summarily removed from the university. The university is of the view that we must accord all students the right to a fair trial in line with Section 35 of our Constitution. This is important because some of those people whose names appear there have not even been charged. No charge against them has been laid. And I have given an undertaking, and I've asked the students right through the university to identify any of those people whose names are on that list, and if they violated them, they must report, and we must lay a charge against that person. Once a charge has been laid, we do have within our disciplinary processes to suspend such a person pending the finalization of their case. But we cannot suspend a person without having granted them what is called a pre-suspension hearing. It's a fundamental principle of Audi Altarum Patum. So the first step is for someone to come forward and say, so and so sexually violated me, to prepare a statement so that we can lay a charge against that person. Once a charge has been laid, we can then set up a pre-suspension hearing. And once that hearing has been held, and the view is that the continued presence of such a person on campus is undesirable, we can then suspend the person. So that for me is important, that we treat every person in terms of the Constitution. And Section 35 of the Constitution has the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. The university wishes to express its disquiet with the publication of a list of names of people in the manner that this, this was done, as it is extremely damaging and we are of the view that it is unconstitutional. 
Rhodes University cannot condone the sharing of such information, which is a complete violation of another's rights. It destroys the presumption of innocence and takes away an individual's right in line with Section 35 of the Constitution. The university believes that if after being charged and found guilty of having committed rape or sexual assault, perpetrators must be punished to the full extent of the law. As I indicated earlier, we will never protect rapists in our university. We'll never protect anyone who commits sexual violence in our institution. Rapists belong in jail, and they need to stay there for a very, very long time. But what is important is that we follow due process, and that everyone is accorded the rights enshrined in the Constitution. Following the release of the RU reference list, a group of protesters went from residence to residence, hunting down those whose names appeared on the list. The students were held against their will, and this constituted a violation of their constitutional right. The university expresses its disapproval of this practice. And as I've indicated, when the list appeared on Sunday, a call was made for students to gather in front of the Steve Biko building, and uh, a big group of students started to march from residence to residence, going into the rooms of those students who are still at Rhodes, uh, hunting them down and uh, taking them uh, to, to the whole group. Uh, and that was a huge violation of their rights. So we disapprove of that because it is inappropriate to do that. If someone has committed a crime, we must report them, and they must be subjected to the full extent of the law. We cannot allow people to take law into their own hands. We cannot allow people to take law into their own hands. Now, these students were held against their will by the students. Uh, two of, one of them managed to escape um, that night, and the other one managed to escape later, but the third one was held throughout the night until the following morning. Uh, attempts to plead that he be released uh, were never heeded, and the police came around and uh, freed that young man. Uh, we must respect the Constitution, and we must respect the rule of law. The academic program of the university will resume on Monday, the 25th of April, and these discussions will continue through the curriculum. We must not stop raising awareness. We must never shy away from confronting some of the most pernicious and shameful ills of our society. We must never rest until the scourge of rape and sexual violence is permanently eradicated from our society. Rhodes University stands in solidarity with all survivors of rape and sexual violence. Aluta Continua. I thank you. I will now field questions. Any questions on the floor? Why do you choose to say that the students who went to raise were hunting down other students? Because in that way, you are criminalizing us as students and making us to look like we're hooligans. That time, you yourself do not know what we would have done to the perpetrators. Why are you under the assumption that we wanted to instigate mob justice? It is important that if there is an allegation against a person, that that person is reported uh, either through the university processes or at the South African Police Services, and due process is followed. That is important. David. 
Thank you, David. This is the statement of the university leadership. Uh, it was important for the university to clarify these issues and inform the South African public about the developments in this university. I must indicate that we have continuous engagements with various sections of our university, and I'm hoping that by Sunday we'll be able to convene a university um, assembly uh, to I see how far we are in resolving some of these issues. Dr. Mabizela, I just would like to understand what solace can you offer survivors, students, and anyone else who wants to know currently, because the task team is um, it's understood um, for what purpose it has been created, but what can you say right now to comfort students as leadership hasn't really shown a a sense of sympathy towards students and you know what they're feeling currently. As I have indicated, we are in full solidarity with any student who has suffered sexual violence or rape. We are encouraging them. In fact, um, over these two days, there have been programs in the dining halls to educate our students about issues of sexual violence and rape. But we have gone further than that. We have secured additional staff to provide counseling because the past few days have been very traumatic for a number of people. And so we have secured additional counseling staff so that those who wish to receive support and counseling are provided with such. And more than that, we have encouraged those that wish to report. In fact, some people have come forward to come and report. And I think the critical thing for us is to provide a safe, secure, caring, and supporting environment for them to feel confident that their institution will look after them. And that is what we are trying to do at the moment. Some of the things are long term, but others cannot wait for long. We must as a matter of agency, put in place all the necessary support mechanisms so that those who come forward are not re-traumatized or are forced to relive a very painful and horrific experience. That's why we have increased our pool of counselors uh, so that they're able to deal with that. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, the, the annual protest that we have um, is, is really an awareness-raising campaign, uh, not protest in the, in the conventional sense. Uh, it is in its 11th year now. Um, in fact, what we have uh, become aware is that perhaps even that campaign uh, needs to be reviewed uh, because we do this on an annual basis. And the events of this week clearly demonstrate that we need to do a lot more. Um, and I think it is important, and I must thank our students uh, and our staff for bringing this very important issue as sharply as they have. You know, one could look at this as, um, as a negative, in a negative way, but I look at it in a very positive way. We are an institution where leaders learn. So students have exercised their agency, and they have said issues of rape and sexual violence must be attended to as a matter of agency. And we are responding to that. In fact, the task team that I referred to was not set up today. It was set up 
on Monday already. We had already started uh, putting together all of these things on Monday. But it all, what has happened also indicates that uh, we do need to continually monitor and evaluate all our programs uh, so that they remain relevant and they remain effective. All right, um, Anil M. Chakula from Roberts Mayor. Uh, that, that has been a lot on social media from students and uh, social media <coughs> pages as well about, about your handling of the whole situation. I just wanted to uh, a response from you on uh, first the first issue is about police being on campus and the other issue is about the different roads that are for within campus or are public roads because those are the two issues that I picked up that were problematic. So just from your side, if you could explain that. Okay. The police have not come on campus as such. What happened on Wednesday, I think it's important to clarify this. On Wednesday morning, the entrances into the universities had been barricaded. Barricades had been erected on Lucas Avenue, on Prince Alfred Street, and also on South Street. Lucas Avenue is a public road. Prince Alfred Street is still unclear at the moment, but South Street is a public road. So when police came here on Wednesday morning, they simply said, you are blocking a public road, namely uh, this, uh, this avenue. They said, you are blocking the public road, uh, and I'm informed that uh, they gave students notice to remove the barricades, uh, and students did not comply. And after having given them notice, uh, they, the police used pepper spray uh, to disperse the students uh, to remove the barricades. I'm informed that in that process, uh, uh, two or three students were arrested. They then proceeded to the other entrances. Uh, again, the situation got quite heated on South Street. Um, that's where police used, uh, I think, rubber bullets. Uh, but those are public roads. And each time I asked the police to pull back, they would simply respond by saying, this is a public road. Uh, they are violating uh, the laws of the country. Thank you, Dr. Mabizela, uh, Paige Muno from Oppidan Press. My question for you is twofold. In the first task team meeting, it was raised several times that the students no longer trust staff to have their best interests at heart, whether that be with following through with these procedures that you've now put in place, or having their best interests at heart when it comes to police on campus. Um, I was wondering how we were looking to address that. And secondly, in the crowd, as I've, I've thusly seen, and through questioning, it's been raised to my attention that one of the accused um, was actually addressed for his alleged crimes, and he was given hours for those crimes. Is there any truth to that allegation? Okay, the issue of trust. Um, I think it will be important if we really want to make progress on addressing the issues of rape and sexual violence that we work together. We must work together as management, as staff, and as students. So we really need to develop enough trust so that we are able to pull our energies and our creativity to address what I've called a pernicious problem that faces our society, but also faces our university. Uh, so trust will have to be earned. And the task teams that I've referred to are made up of students and staff. And I believe that working together, they will be able to craft appropriate responses, which will help us create 
the kind of an environment I spoke of, a supportive one, an empathetic one, a caring one. Because at the moment, uh, people say, we don't trust the system. We have been failed. And so we will have to work hard together to rebuild that trust uh, so that uh, we address uh, these, these issues uh, which, which are completely unacceptable in our society. Uh, the second one relates to a particular case. I'm, I cannot imagine, I, I'll have to look at the record, I cannot imagine someone who is found guilty of rape being given hours. Uh, a few years ago, uh, we successfully prosecuted a young man who had committed rape. And that young man was expelled from this university. Um, and he appealed, and at the appeal stage, the sentence was reduced to 10 years of expulsion from Rhodes University. So that person would not be coming back to Rhodes University, uh, not for more than 10 years. It is quite instructive to note that that case, the state had declined to prosecute. The state said, we don't have evidence, we are not going to prosecute. We marshaled our own resources. We got the best lawyers from Johannesburg. And they prosecuted this matter. And they did so successfully. So what I'm saying is that it, at times, the state may decline to prosecute. And that, for me, is very important that we, are able, we were able to successfully prosecute that case. Uh, so I'll have to look at that, because if someone has committed such a horrendous crime and is given hours, uh, I can tell you that cannot happen at Rhodes. And if you go around and you get the record, and if that person got hours for rape, then there's something wrong. I will look into that, and I'll get back to you. And if the conviction was for rape, then it had to be far more than hours. It's not hours. It is expulsion. Uh, it, it's, it's mandatory. OK. OK. Uh, it's fine. Thank you, Dr. Mabizela. It's Govin from Eyewitness News. I have a few questions, so I'm hoping you'll bear with me. Um, OK, so we've spoken about the rape culture here. So and, uh, since this protest has started, there have also been references to the rape culture um, behind the curve here. So. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> So from the alumni as well, and I wanted to find out from your desk, uh, do, you, do you agree with people who say that there is a rape culture, systemic rape culture at Rhodes University? Um, and then I have a couple of more, if you bear with me, please. So I want to find out how many cases of sexual harassment or rape have been reported to Rhodes University this year, if you have those details. And then, um, I, I just have an important question, sorry. Does the university at the time deal with allegations of sexual assault, now sexual violence, or rape internally? Is there any process at the university where allegations of sexual assault are dealt with internally and resolved between the two parties? And then the last one, uh, so, one sorry, comes so, from the uh, uh, This one comes straight from the students. So now, so, sorry, sorry, could you just start? What was the first one? Culture of rape, uh, culture of rape yeah? Yeah. Huh? How many cases of sexual assault and rape have been reported to the university this year? Uh -huh. uh, does the university at any time deal with cases of sexual assault or violence or rape internally? Then the last one from the students themselves. <laughs> you speak about trust having to be earned, um, building trust as you deal with the problem of rape. Most of the students are still very unhappy with the video footage that shows you pushing one of the protesters. Some of them say you should offer a, a public apology. Um, and I know you've already apologized to, to the students as well. How do you expect the students to trust you again after they were protesting against rape and they saw you pushing one of them? In fact, some of them said that you are their leader and they feel betrayed by what you've done. Okay. What were you thinking at that point? Thank you. Um, look, I did indicate that uh, uh, a university is a microcosm of, a, of the society. And our society has a serious problem of rape and, um, and sexual violence. And so some of those social ills do manifest themselves in an institution of, of higher learning. And so to that extent, we do have a, a big problem. 
uh, in much the same way that the whole of our society has to deal with this problem. And we must read our society and our university. At the moment, I'm responsible for this university. I've said we should never rest until we have made sure that this environment is free of any rape and sexual violence. Uh, how many cases have been reported? Since the beginning of the year, two cases have been reported. Two cases have been reported. Uh, do we deal with sexual uh, assault? That is an important question. We do deal with sexual assault matters. Um, in fact, I have been reflecting uh, since the start of this protest regarding the serious crime of rape. Rape is a serious crime. And in my reflections, I've been asking myself, does the university have the capacity and the capability to investigate and successfully prosecute a crime of rape? When the state, with all its resources, struggles as much as it does. And so as we review our policies, we must ask ourselves if we have the kind of capacity, capability, and expertise that is required to successfully prosecute a crime of rape. That said, any person who experiences this horrific crime must look at our institution as their first port of call. And in that regard, we must provide a supportive and empathetic and a caring space for that person to be supported and be able to report the matter and know that the institution cares uh, about them. The video footage, I, as you have indicated, I have given uh, an apology in that regard. It was in the context of uh, removing uh, the, the barriers. Uh, it was unintended, and I apologized unreservedly. Uh, there was no malice intended, and I can reissue the same apology. Thank you. Thank you. We are aware that the task team is meeting at the moment, so we'll end it there. Thank you very much. I don't think my question was answered. I wanted to find out whether the cases of sexual assault are dealt with internally by roads and not reported to the police. Are there instances of that nature happening? And okay. I asked whether how the vice chancellor thinks the students can trust them again. Look, we do deal with certain aspects of sexual assault uh, in the university, and we have protocols to deal with that. And students can indicate their options that they have before them. Uh, they can indicate how they wish their matter to be dealt with. And insofar as rape, in fact, there is nothing that stops students from reporting these cases at police station. Uh, so, Students do exercise their option if they wish to, in fact, they are advised if, that they, if they wish to report the matter at the police station, they could do so, and we will support them every step of the way. And right through the prosecution stage, we will support them. Uh, coming back to the issue of how uh, students should be able to trust me, um, look, we, we are all human. We are all human. If anyone has never made a mistake, then I have great respect for that person. I made a mistake. It was unintentional, and I apologized. And I hope that students will acknowledge that and see other things that I am doing for this university and the extent to which I'm ready to put my body on the line for each one of them. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.